Hey guys, welcome back to episode 2 of the tutorial on Master Plus. Um, for those of you that don't know, Master Plus is probably the go-to um, area for a lot of discords lately. Um, certainly the discord for myself, you know, for myself and, and the likes of Rainy Lamb and J Page Martin and all of those guys in the Snooker Live Discord. I will try and leave a link to the Discord guys if you know if you want to join, if you play this game, if you play it online and you want to play in the community. Um, by all means, um, you know, drop me a comment if you're struggling to find it or to get located on it, and I'll uh, do my best to get you an invite or at least give you the contact to, uh, name to, to be able to join that. Guys, we're going to be looking at long shots on this episode, and um, it's not just about making a pot because let's be real. Um, most of you guys that are watching this, you can pop balls. It doesn't matter where you pop them from, you know relatively the people I come up against they are very very good at single pots from distance or from big angles of cushions um, ridiculous cuts um, better than me you know I, I've played some guys in our discord and whilst I might win the match they their single ball pot in is off the scale it is you know it is, it is really really ridiculous how good they are some of them um, but equally it's not just about knocking the ball in is it because it's all about where you're going to get your next ball from whether it be a color or a red um, so I just want to go over a few things that I think about or what I consider um, when I play a long shot now spe specifically on master plus um, this this is the obvious choice the break was bad it's left us a, a, a chance um, but the issue that I have here is that the pink and blacks tied up um, I don't believe the pink goes into this corner down here but we will give it a check uh, no, it's blocked. So now the, our only real option, if we want to take this red on, is to come off the top cushion and come up the table for either the blue, yellow, possibly the brown, depending on how far we come up. Now what we could do is we could take the more difficult red. Um, we could roll that one in with a look to bounce off the side cushion far enough out to take an almost straight blue. Now there's a slight issue with that guys and, and, and it's possible you know if you, if you can gauge your power right um, by all means you know take that on the issue that you have is is that where the ball loses momentum it will come off the side cushion at a lower angle so there's a strong possibility if you look to the single red to the um, the most right of the, uh, the pink um, there's a strong possibility you could end up behind that <coughs> excuse me guys <coughs> So if you do that, then you haven't got a pot of colour, and then you have to come out with some fantastic safety shot, which is going to stop somebody getting the next red. So for me, the obvious choice is this one, with a look to either pot the yellow or the blue afterwards. So what we're going to do, guys, is that what I generally do is I try to find out what the power spot is just to roll the red in. So, so you can see that the, the green line after the red is disappearing as I, as I lower it. So that means if I was to hit it at that pace, that red wouldn't reach the corner pocket. So if I push that up so that that line almost meets the pocket, or it does meet the pocket, and equally, if it stops short of the pocket, once it's fulfilled, generally it reaches. It's You know you have to get your power spot on, but generally it reaches. If you're really unsure, just, just give it an extra 1 or 2% and it should just drop in. So now I don't want that just to happen, because if I do that, there's a possibility that the white at that power is going to stick to the top cushion and it's not going to bounce off high enough for me to get a good look at the blue now ideally I want to be slightly above my target red ball so I want to be closer to the right cushion than the top cushion so then that it allows me a left angle off the blue to then get by the side of this red so after the blue it will be this red into that corner yeah so that's my sort of thought process on that and that, that I'm thinking two or three shots ahead and at the moment the black and the pink is just not not playable um, we have to sort of rely on getting some sort of an angle on something to, to split them up again but what we're going to do we're going to try these powers guys so we're trying it at 19% and I'll show you what I mean with the sorry let me just get that right so that that effectively should just trickle in providing I get my power bang on the center so let's just try that and then we'll see where the white ends up it was a little bit firm, but I can see straight away, guys, that the blue isn't on. 
and I said this didn't I before we played the shot now my only option is is to play a fantastic brain or green um, and let's be fair I'm already chasing the white ball <clears throat> um, and that's not what you want to do you want to make it as easy as you can um, you know, it's not letting me retake my shot for some reason Right, okay guys, it's not letting me uh it's not letting me retake my shot. So what we'll do is we'll um Ah there we go. Okay, so the game does bug out like that sometimes guys. It you know happens in, in, in online games and when you're streaming it's a pain. Um so we'll go back to that percentage. Seventeen nineteen just gets the red ball to drop but we know that it leaves us behind that red so the blue's blocked now what I would think we'll try now is we'll put some top on the white ball because what it does is it extends the distance that the white ball covers um, so I'll put the full top on it we'll leave it at the same pace and now we'll see where the white ball goes I anticipate that it will bounce out slightly more I don't know if it'll make the blue available but we'll have a go better power that time See, it's immediately bounced off, and look how much further away from the top cushion it is just by adding the top spin. Now, we're no better off. We've got the same block, but it is not available. So, we'll try that again, and we know now that we need to put more power on the ball. Um... Now I am a little bit concerned about the line that it takes off the top cushion to whether or not it's actually going to come out and pop out above the, for, the, for the blue. So we're going to put top on it again. We're going to put a little bit more power on it this time. We're going to try it at sort of 23%. Now I don't want to put too much on because it widens the angle. And if it widens the angle, it, there's a strong possibility we can end up just pressing off the top cushion and end up directly behind that red. So we could snoo cross off on all the colours. So we played it at 23. Right, now let's see the difference we've got. Absolutely none. Now that potentially tells me that it's not on in that ang at that angle to come out for the blue. Now there's another way you can play this, guys. You can put um, a little bit of left hand side on it now the issue here is you have to hit it considerably harder because by the time that if you hit it playing ball sorry if you hit it with top top left on it at a slower pace by the time the white reaches the red effectively the side spins not on the ball so you're not going to be any better off if anything there's a strong possibility you might miss a shot now you have to be accurate with power on this guys because you're putting side on the ball it changes the path of the white so if you're slightly off target it will miss the red so we'll try at 23 and I'll try and show you what I mean about the spin hopefully it'll hold a little bit but we'll see how we get on this power is spot on red should go in see it's just took exactly the same path as it was if it was playing ball so I'm still blocked off so again guys we're no better off um, the only other way we can do this is that we can play it heavily and, and hope that we come off in a way which uh, gives us an option at a colour. We could put loads of top on it, we could leave it at 39% and then just play it a bit of luck. Let's see how we go on. Again blue's not available is the yellow available no so again we're no better off guys all right so consider these things when you're playing your shots specifically on your long shots so what we we'll do is we're <clears throat> we'll lift the cue ball it is a practice guys it's just an idea to show you long shots um we'll try and get this red almost straight into this bottom right corner or top right corner as you're looking at it now it's not quite straight, but we'll go with it. If you was given this scenario, 
you know the black and the pink's tied up, so let's forget about the black and the pink. So you know your only real option here is to go for the blue after. Um, so there's two ways you can do this, guys. You can draw the white ball all the way back and play a straight blue into the middle or a slight angled into the middle, which is a, a good choice. Or you can just roll through on this red and play the blue into the opposite corner, which would be the yellow pocket. Now, personally, I would do that. And that's what we're going to do now. Remember, guys, that line, once that line stops moving and you continuously increase the pressure, the chances are that that goes. So, it should just drop in. Oh, sorry, let me reset my uh, spin. It should just drop in at... 21% I would suggest but if you're an ounce below that centre bar you might just leave the red hanging over the pocket so and because you're still quite high at the table with that red it's still halfway up the side cushion as you can see I would just put that little bit more power on it um, so that it rolls forward an extra 4% or so and then just drop that red in See what I mean, guys? And then you have um, this almost straight blue. Now, obviously, the difficulty you do have is is that you're the white that needs to finish on the table so that you can come through the gap of the blue and the red to be able to pop this one. So that is a problem that you're going to face. Um, but you, the good thing is you have the natural angle. There is the natural angle there. You, you need to roll through almost to the bolt line to do it. But you, you should be able to do that. Um, so, you know, give that some thought when you're playing it. What we'll do is we'll just... Um, we'll play the same shot, but we'll draw it back for the blue. Hopefully we'll pot it. Because we're going to be playing it at quite a lot more pace. So, when you're putting bottom on it. Now, what I tend to do is that... what I, In my mind, it's all about muscle memory for power. So... I sort of put half of the table or roughly half the table slightly over at 50% full bottom to hold the white where the object ball is. Um, what I mean by that guys is if I play that's slightly over halfway of the table that shot. So if I play it at 50% I'd imagine that the white would roll forwards past the red point after. So we'll give it a try. Do you see what I mean? Even though I put bottom on the ball, because the distance the white ball was travelling, the bottom spin, the back spin had already worn off. Um, so that that isn't any good for this shot because what we're trying to do is draw the white ball back um, to the blue. So what I would try and do here is is that I know that fifty percent, sorry, 50, roughly fifty five percent is going to hold the white where it is, but we also know we need to come back almost quarter of the table. So what I would probably look at doing is putting this up to about 66%. Um, and then when we get to 66%, let's see where we go. Right. Well, I've clearly overdone it. But what I've done by overdoing it is I've still made the blue available. And I've still got an option of a yellow or a brown. Um, yellow and brown is obviously a little bit tougher to get onto that red there whereas the blue we could just draw the white ball back to just literally in front of where it is now yeah so we'll give that another go and see if we can get it plumb on so we know that just slightly above 66% was drawing it way back too far so if we go 64 and actually try and stop it in the middle bar this time um, we might find that it works out quite nicely um, there you go there you go guys that's what we're looking for so it's about it's about understanding the percentages it's about understanding um, how hard you need to hit the ball it's about understanding where you're going to hit the ball with regards to position so whether it be spin, top spin, side spin whatever it may be um, just want to show you the effects of not putting quite enough spin on the ball um, that is more over this distance that position there as you can see on the white ball is more like a stun shot but to play a stun shot over that distance you're looking at like that much power 
because obviously that little bit of bottom that you're applying to it needs to be still applied when the white meets the red otherwise it's just going to roll forward and possibly end up with an old world of bother um so yeah you know you know give that give that some thought i mean you could equally you could do it a different way i mean if you really wanted to be um judd trump you could just rely on a bit of luck and just see what happens you know which i see a lot of people do you know a lot of people will play that with a look to develop something or try and develop something but what you've got to remember guys is when you're playing these top players if you do that and you miss or if you leave yourself in a position where you really haven't even got that much of an easy color to take on next it is so difficult to play a good safety shot where you don't know where the white ball is going to finish up and the chances are you'll get punished for a 60 or 70 break it, and some of the players it'd be it'd be sort of over 100 it'd be over 100 um, so for me that's not really an option um, what else can we just give you a quick overview on for with regards to long shots um, yeah I think that pretty much covers it guys I mean what we could do is we could just um, we could just roll this red in and leave a long blue then um, again my my obvious obvious choice is to is to just roll it in um because i want this angle on the blue to be able to get onto the next red it's what i always look for i always look for those um little bits and pieces now this is quite a strong angle guys this is because before when we played it the white was closer to the corner pocket now this one here the, the chances are the white's going to roll too far to the left and get blocked out by the second red closer to the pink so what I would suggest that you do here, and this is probably a good option, um, is, is that you play this as a stun shot, so slightly below center. Now the hardest thing about this is is that the power to hit it, because what you don't want to do is roll across through to the middle pocket or block yourself with a pink. So it might be a little bit of trial and error for, 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 for a second guys, but let's give it a try. So just below center at 55 and i already know that that's blocked so i know that i haven't drew the white back as far as i wanted it to do now to be fair that's not actually a difficult plant um that plant just get that goes that's that's quite straightforward but ideally what we wanted we wanted the white here so that we could hold that red and play the blue again and then get rid of that red there all right guys so again um like the previous uh video drop any comments you think you know give me some tips you know if you've got something different that you want to see um send me your long shots send me your positions send me your percentages that you use you know let me know what you do um and if you've got any questions guys or if you want to see something else let me know i'll happily help you guys out if i can um and i will catch you in the next episode guys